I'm very excited about this head-to-head -head review versus the Asus ZenBook S16 OLED and the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360. Two 16-inch laptops, thin and light build quality, awesome large trackpads on the top cover. They're both pen compatible with Microsoft Pen Protocol technology. We have the Samsung pen here, magnets to the top. We have the Asus Pen 2.0. We're gonna give you head to head, right next to each other, strokes and sensitivity tests. We're gonna do benchmark tests in this video. We're gonna check out the usability and build quality, all of that in this video. We have both the Intel Lunar Lake and the new Ryzen AI9 HX series chipsets for both of these laptops. Let's see which laptop is right for you. Now, first and foremost, I wanna close these down and check out the weight and thickness of each of them. You can see that the Asus is slightly thicker than the Samsung Book 5 Pro 360. Uh, you can also see that it's a little bit taller um, in regards to the actual form factor. As we pick both devices up, you can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen. I honestly can't tell from the feel which one is heavier, which one is lighter. I do like this matte design on the top cover of the Zen Book. We have the classic, you know, aluminum design for the Book 5, both very classy chassis. And uh, let's go ahead and turn them up on their side and check out the port selection between the Zen Book and the Book 5 Pro 360 from Samsung. Almost identical, two USB type C's, HDMI. We have a headphone jack on the Zen Book on this side. Switch it over to find your headphone jack for the Book 5 Pro 360. USB type A's, but then I think a big winner here is going to be that the full size SD card slot comes on the Zen Book S16 OLED. And we only have a micro SD card reader on the Book 5. 5 Pro 360. A bit of a letdown for the Pro 360. Definitely a big win for the ZenBook S16. Looking at these two devices, you can see a very similar chassis design. Speakers coming out of the side as well as a little bit of air and fl flow and ventilation coming out of there. Very similar uh, amount of ventilation out of the bottom. One thing I do like about the ZenBook over the Book 5 Pro 360 is the hinge configuration. Now I know that this is a two-in-one laptop, so it's really advantageous for you to be able to, you know, put this into tent or you know presentation mode. That's super nice. It's got a nice firm hinge. But one thing I really like about the ZenBook is the way the hinge is configured. Let me show you this. So we have two hinge points on the Book Five. Now as I open and close the lids. You can see that we actually have one, two, three, four connection points for the hinge, which makes it really nice and rigid and a good connection point to the keyboard deck. And then if you look at the screen bounce, there's a less screen bounce on the Zen Book compared to the Book 5 Pro 360. Now screen flex is almost the same, barely any screen flex for the Book 5, a little bit more screen flex for the Zen Book. Um, now, that is really more of a personal preference on um, which screen you like better. And it's so interesting because the screen looks a lot bigger on the Book 5, but as you put them right next to each other uh, and you actually lift up the screen and put them right there, there's the same height. They're gonna be the same height and same width as well. So there's gonna be the same screen size, just a little bit different chassis design. You can see a smaller bezel. It's gonna be on the Zen Book compared to the Book 5 Pro 360. Now, as I said earlier, both are pen compatible and I'm gonna do a full head-to-head -head pen run through here in just a minute. But for now, before we get that far, I don't wanna miss the upgrade path. Now, both of these laptops, they are not going to be upgradable in regards to RAM. Okay, so they have RAM soldered to the motherboard. They both have 32 gigs of RAM, uh, but they both have a swappable M.2 slot, which comes with the boot drive. So keep in mind, pull the bottom cover off, you will have access to the boot drive. This video is brought to you by Lenovo's Aura Edition laptops imagined with Intel. The Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 Aura Edition is their flagship device built with military grade tested materials, weighing less than one kilogram, featuring a 2.8K OLED with 100% DCI-P3, Delta E less than one color accuracy, and providing the best battery life ever from a 14 inch ThinkPad laptop. Looking for something more budget friendly without compromising any features? Check out the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Aura Edition. It also has a 2.8K display with 100% DCI-P3 
Delta E less than one color accuracy and 14 hours of battery life while streaming video. You can check out my full reviews linked in the YouTube cards above and in the description below, or you can head on over to Lenovo.com using the links below to check out the live pricing and see which model is right for you. Now let's keep moving forward. Let's check out those displays as promised. So we have some solid displays here. They're both gonna be OLED displays. For the Book 5 Pro 360, we have a 3K AMOLED 2880 by 1800, 382 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 98% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.53. Now, for the Zen Book, we have a 2880 by 1800, 383 nits of screen brightness, 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.75. So very close, very close screens. Uh, they're both gonna have nice dark darks. They're gonna have really sharp and bright, vibrant colors. And so I think you really can't go wrong with either of these displays. Now, one thing I really wanna take a look at, of course, is going to be the battery life of these two devices. So for the ZenBook S16, we have 19 hours and 56 minutes for productivity and 19 hours and 42 minutes of streaming video playback. Now for the Book 5 Pro 360, 18 hours and 56 minutes for productivity, 19 hours and 21 minutes for streaming video playback. They are so neck and neck, it is absolutely insane. And so it's really hard for me to say which laptop I like better because they both do these two things very well. They have great displays. They have a nice large form factor. They have great battery life. Now we do have a two-in-one functionality here for the Pro 360 where we don't for the ZenBook S16. They have large trackpads nice keyboards. Now one area that might lean you towards the Book 5 Pro 360 is the numpad, okay? So if you're a creator, numpad is often very advantageous to you. You also have a fingerprint reader. You do not have a fingerprint reader on the Zen Book S16. Keep that in mind. Um, however, you do have a center trackpad. For me personally, I love the center trackpad. It just makes more sense ergonomically for me being a right-handed user. And so this might be better if you want the numpad and you don't mind that the trackpad is shifted over. Now you're gonna have a far more ultrabook feel on the keyboard for the Book 5 Pro 360 compared to the medium key travel on the ZenBook S16. Um, here's a quick sample of using both the keyboards and trackpads so you can hear for yourself what they might sound like. Um, but overall, I honestly feel like there's a bit more premium experience on the Book 5 compared to the uh, ZenBook just from you know the feel of the device. Now going ahead and taking a look at the trackpad, I know I just gave you an audio sample. They both feel nice. I think again, the premium feel is gonna go to the Book 5 Pro 360. Okay, now without further ado, let's take a tour on the pen for both these devices. I'm gonna put them side by side and you can see the stroke and differences between them. All right, so we're looking at the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 with the S Pen and this comes included with the device versus the Asus ZenBook S16 OLED and the Asus Pen 2.0. This pen does not come with the device. Uh, we'll start over here with the Asus Light Stroke to Heavy. Does that very well, feels very natural, uh, even on the glossy display. And then we'll move over here to the Samsung Light to Heavy, Light to Heavy. You can see the difference in the trail. This one feels a little bit more accurate. Uh, you can see it's a little bit more bumpy. Uh, it kind of senses uh, as I make the stroke. This one's a little smoother. It, it looks smoother. Um, it isn't as sensitive. It doesn't have as much sensitivity. So it doesn't see as much of maybe your imperfections as um, over here. So this will definitely have uh, much more of an accurate stroke. Now. Uh, one thing I'll notice is I have a heavy stroke, 35 pixel uh, brush stroke, and I'm gonna try and do some light, some light strokes here. And it, it's, it feels a little sticky, to be honest, uh, when using the Samsung. I come over here, I'm gonna try and do these same light strokes. And it can do light strokes pretty good, much less sticky 
uh, on the pen tip. Now let's go ahead and bump it down to uh, a 15 pixel brush size on both of these devices. And let's see if we can get some lighter strokes on our hands here. Let's go ahead and move down a little bit, get us some new canvas area. Okay. All right, so let's go for some lighter strokes here. You can see we can get some light strokes. It wants to stay kind of heavy on the uh, Asus. Let's just do some, some lighter. So you can see sometimes even when I'm hitting it, it's not registering completely every single time. And then let's go and do some light strokes. So you can see the, the sensitivity on light strokes definitely seems a bit more accurate on the Book 5 compared to the S16. So you can see the difference there in some like that cross hatching that I did. Using the same amount of pressure. And you can see there's more accuracy on the Samsung. Now, according to what I can research on the internet, this is an AES technology pen. Um, so Wacom technology in that pen. And this over here, I know for sure is MPP protocol, Microsoft pen protocol. So you definitely are gonna have the technology to be more accurate in the Samsung as compared to the Asus. Um, but note that both do well, it just would appear um, that we're going to have a better result on the Book 5 Pro 360 due to the technology um, and the way that it interacts with the pen and the screen. Okay, now for the audio experience, which one do you think has better speakers? Here's a quick audio sample so you can hear for yourself. And both laptops have a webcam on the top bezel. Here's a sample of the webcam so you can hear for yourself. This is the webcam on the Asus ZenBook S16 OLED and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now one thing that I, I don't love about the Book 5 Pro 360, it's a bit of a personal preference, is the rounded bezel. Uh, let me see if I can pull up just like a, a web browser so you can see this. So you can see here at the top, it's rounded um, for the bezel. Yep, down there at the bottom you can see too. That's not the case for the ZenBook. It's just a squared off bezel. Some people love the rounded. It makes it feel more like a tablet device or something or like an iPhone or a, you know Android device. I just like kind of the classic squared off image just a personal preference, just wanted to point that out. Now, if you're curious with the exact pricing and availability of these two devices, that might be a big part of your decision-making process. Head down in the description below, click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I know that that's a big part of um, making the decision. These Samsung are quite expensive. The Asus are a bit more budget-friendly. Now, I will say, as I mentioned during the keyboard and trackpad experience, the Samsung does feel more premium. Um, even though this is a nice chassis with really nice materials, it just has a little bit more of a premium feel in the Book 5, so just keep that in mind. Now, let's check out the thermals for these two devices, the Book 5 versus the S16. For the S16, 36 decibels to 40 decibels of fan noise during the 4K export. That's a nine minute 4K clip placed into Premiere Pro, exported out at full quality 4K settings. 36 to 40 decibels of fan noise at 72 to 75 degrees Celsius. Running that same test with the Book 5 Pro 360, 36 to 40 decibels of fan noise at 56 to 61 degrees Celsius. Now, what about the export time for those two? Four minutes and 28 seconds from the Book 5 Pro 360, four minutes and 31 seconds from the Asus ZenBook S16. 
neck and neck. Now, let's go ahead and check out the full benchmarks between these two devices. We have in the ZenBook S16, the Ryzen AI 9 HX370 CPU with the Radeon 890M integrated graphics and 32 gigs of RAM. From the Book 5 Pro 360, we have the latest Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, latest Lunar Lake. So if you wanna to go to Mars with Elon Musk, this is the CPU for you or chipset. And you have the Intel Arc 140V with uh, 16 gigs, that's all integrated graphics. Um, and also it's 32 gigs of RAM. So these are perfectly paired uh, for comparison on these uh, benchmark tests. Now going ahead and taking a look at the actual results, we have the ZenBook S16 uh, looking pretty solid in the single core and multi-core uh, benchmarks. You can see that it's actually taking the lead above the book five by just a hair for single core. And then looking at multi-core, um, you can see again, it takes the lead by just a hair uh, over the book five. We're gonna take it Cinebench 2024 single core and multi-core, you can observe those for yourself. And then I'm gonna move on to the Photoshop benchmark. You can see that the ZenBook S16 scores a 6,773 versus the Book 5 at 6,560. Those are nominal differences. Both of these laptops have great performance. And so really, either one would make a great choice for Photoshop. 32 gigs of RAM is fantastic. We've got really good performance on both uh, chipsets. And so really the choice is up to you if you're a Photoshop user, great multitasking, not gonna really have any issues. Now, the next thing I wanna take a look at though is drop frames. For 1080p, we have zero drop frames for the S16, zero, uh, 10 drop frames for 4K and 11,203 for uh, 6K B-RAW. I did do some 6K B-RAW testing. Now going ahead and looking at the Book 5 Pro 360, I did see some better results. Zero drop frames at full quality 1080p, zero drop frames for 4K, and only 3,259 drop frames for 6K B-RAW. So definitely gonna be our top contender if you're considering an on-the-go device for a higher resolution video editing uh, workflow. Now let's take a look at the export times, like I said, four minutes and 28 seconds out of the book five, four minutes and 31 seconds out of the S16. Now switching over to 6K B-RAW export time, 24 minutes and 38 seconds out of the S16, 28 minutes and 31 seconds out of the book five Pro 360. So a bit better of an export time though from the ZenBook S16. If price were not an option, I was looking for the most premium device, I would go for the book five Pro 360. It's got great pen compatibility, tent mode, all the works. However, if I'm looking to save a little bit of money, you can't beat the price point of the Asus ZenBook S16. Still has great build quality, has amazing performance, incredible battery life. And so I think this is a huge contender in this head-to-head -head battle and it'll save you quite a bit of cheddar. I mean, almost to the point where you could like buy the laptop and a camera or and a drawing tablet, just whatever. Well, you don't need that because I mean, you have the pen, but you have more options, you have more budget uh, to spare by choosing the ZenBook S16. Remember that links are in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you here in the next one.